So it's Friday, it's 2024, and I haven't done a Xerox office hours in a little while. The end of the year was really busy. There's a bunch of stuff going on, and I haven't had as much time to poke at some of the uh, bigger features like Xerox drives that I've wanted to. But I managed to carve off a little time this week, and I was able to uh, finish up some interesting stuff, and I figured I'd give you guys a sneak peek at it. So uh, I've got the usual setup here. Uh, I'm running my Xerox controller here. I'm running my uh, Xerox metrics bridge. I'm running my public front end and I'm running my UI development server. This is kind of my local development environment and hiding behind all of that is I've got a Docker uh, version of ZD running in the background. I switched my development environment over to run uh, a quick start minimal Docker implementation built by Ken, which has been working pretty well. Uh, I'm also running uh, all of my RabbitMQ and a lot of the rest of that stuff with a separate Docker Compose. Maybe I'll kind of share some of those details as we get further down the line. But uh, so yeah, I kind of retooled my development environment a little bit, but it's effectively the same. I'm still running my stuff locally and working locally and all that, those sorts of things. So um, we put out Xerox Drives, the very first preview release. Uh, I think it was November, maybe December. I don't remember exactly when we did it. I, I could go look, but it's been a little while now. People have been using it. And uh, that, that was just sort of the very first part of Drives, which is sort of the web dev implementation. Uh, we've got other, other flavors of, sh of file sharing coming, like probably S3, uh, and then maybe some, some customized versions of web dev that are specific to Drives. We'll maintain backwards compatibility with you know, traditional web dev, but layering on some additional capabilities to let us do some other, other clever things on top of uh, web dev for Xerox Drives. But in the meantime, one of the things that I'm, I've got is I'm working on a branch that's Xerox copy phase one. And this is basically a first round of work on uh, the new, some of the new Xerox CLI commands for drives. So let's play with that a little bit. So I've got a um, enabled environment for my local development environment. You can see I'm pointing at localhost. So all the normal Xerox stuff works. It's just in my development environment. So the first thing we'll do is do a Xerox reserve public backend mode drive, and then we'll point it at, let's just point it at temp junk, and we'll give it a unique name. Unique names is something else we rolled out a while ago, not, not that long ago, but at the end of the year, uh, and I'll just call it junk, right? Uh, so there we go. So reserved a front end endpoint, and unique names are cool because it lets you actually, rather than generating a, a sort of a random token for your share, it lets you generate, use a name, Currently, the implementation is that the name must be unique within that specific Xerox service instance. Um, we'll probably this year be dealing with other ways of, of setting up namespaces and those kinds of things. So that, those things are coming. Uh, you just got to keep in mind that Xerox is a work in progress and that we're a small team and we're, we're sort of, you know, uh, bashing our way towards all of these features and things. And uh, we have to sort of balance priorities and all the, all the normal stuff. So... So yeah, so I used a, I created a reserve share for a drive uh, share type. The bat, dash B is a, a shorthand for dash dash backend mode. Um, so now I can do a Xerox share reserved headless and junk, right? So now I can basically access my my drive share. And there's a command line client that's on most Linuxes and things like that called Cadaver. So you can actually do Cadaver and point it at um, hmm, why did I get a 404? I shouldn't have gotten a 404. It did a prop find. Hmm. I do not know. I haven't actually tested. So we're, we're live. We're, we're live here, but we will, let's try a Xerox LS and give it that same URL. Huh? What did I do wrong? It's shared publicly. Very strange. Let's just do a share public backend mode drive headless. Oh, I know why. I'm an idiot. I didn't make the folder. Right? There's a little little uh, fun fact for you. You can point a drive share at a non-existent folder, and you will appropriately get a 404. Uh, nope. Not reserve. I already reserved it. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now if I do... 
uh, cadaver and I do LS, there's nothing in it, which is what you'd expect, right? And I already sort of hinted at the fact that now there's a Xerox LS, right? And you can point it at that same URL and you'll get an empty directory. Um, so we could do something like, let's just say Xerox copy license. There's a file called license for the Xerox repository. And let's just point it at uh, htpjunk.xerox.quigley.com8080, right? So if we copy that, now we do Xerox ls, junk.xerox.quigley.com8080. Now you can see we've got a license, dot license file in there. Um, that's pretty slick. You can, you can, it's basically got a, a, a minimal set of CLI tools that will let you uh, work with uh, drive shares. Um, another cool property, I don't know if everybody that everybody using Xerox understands this, but a public share by definition is also a private share. So I can also, in addition to having to use the big long HTTPS Xerox IO share URL or whatever your self-hosted instance URL is, you can also do Xerox LS Xerox junk. Uh, that's very weird. You're supposed to be able to do that. Unable to dial service junk, cannot validate supply request. Okay. So let's just for fun try, just out of curiosity, restarting my ZD environment and just see what's going on with that. That should be working just fine. Hmm. So another fun fact. Connection refuse. Oh, the controllers aren't running. It helps you start the controller again, right? Um, that's not going to fix this, I don't think. Yeah. So I did take a new SDK dependency last night, and I haven't really tested this yet. Um, oh. No, that's not wrong. That should be right. Huh. Let's just do a little live coding here. So if I go into, let's get rid of this junk folder. We don't need that. D delete, right? Just delete that garbage. Yes. So if we go into uh, the drives, all the drives libraries are here, this new dav client, dav server. Dev client is a fork of an open source uh, web dev library that I'm adding stuff to, and acknowledgments are here. Um, the dev server is a fork of the Go standard library web dev server that has a couple of enhancements to it to let you set, set a modified time property. Um, we'll see how these things shake out over time. So if we go into, let's, how do we want to debug this? So if we go into, So one of the things that, if we go to the command for that, we go to Xerox LS, right? LS, it's loading the environment. My environment's enabled because it's working. Um, and we should be... Oh, I think I know what's wrong here. So I'm a little bit of a dummy. So we can do a little live coding here. Um, Okay, so we need to, there's some missing code. So let's, uh, so what's missing is it's not allowed to dial that service. Failure creating, yeah, which is correct. It's, it's not allowed to dial that service because I didn't actually create access for it. So what I need to do is um, I'm going to borrow some code from copy. And we're going to have to update all of these in the process, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, this. We're going to borrow that code, and we want to use um, access request is target URL dot host. That's the share token in that URL. And then what we want to do is defer a cleanup call for this. So we say uh, SD if error equals SDK dot 
on access. What's it? Yeah, on no. Delete access root. And then we want to say access error is not equal to nil. Then we're just gonna log it. We're gonna stick out a warning. And we'll say error freeing access error. All right. So so basically what this is gonna do is it's going to uh, add an access request that lets the um, and we actually put a guard around this. If target URL dot scheme equals zero, we don't care about doing that unless it's a Xerox URL. So we'll just borrow that code, right? There we go. That should fix LS, right? And I bet in my development, I didn't catch that because I probably had an orphaned set of policies around for my share or something along those lines. So we just found a bug, which is good. Bug Finding bugs is good. So if we build this, now that should work, which it does. Okay, cool. So we fixed a bug. So let's go fix that same bug in LS. We fixed it LS, RM, MV, make dir, all the rest of these. So we're just gonna borrow this code for now and we'll, we'll make this less repeat. We'll make less repeats in this as we go forward, we'll clean it up, but not for this video. So we need to, and that was, Hector, you're all parts of environment load root target. Yes, it goes right here, all right? Bam, so we add it to MD, add it to MV, all right? We're gonna add it to RM. And then we're going, that should be it. Okay, so if we look at LS, Let's just look at the code real quick so you can kind of get an understanding of what this is doing. What it's doing is, um, and also there is an environment variable if you're accessing an HTTP or HTTPS endpoint, you can specify the basic auth for that endpoint on the CLI or you can set this environment variable. So it's basically doing that for us. Um, parses the URL, loads the root. If the target URL scheme is Xerox, then uh, what it does is it is going to create access for us and then set up a defer to delete that when we're done. This sync framework is the new um, sync components. It's one-way synchronization, which implements copies and, and incremental sync uh, as part of the drives framework. So it creates a, a target is a, if we look in model, a target is this guy. So it's basically a generalized version of the operations against various types of storage. Um, so it gives us a, a proxy for that. And then it's basically asking for a directory. Um, and it's slash, but honestly, for the, it's actually, when it's configured, it's given the target URL. So it already, it's not adding anything to that target URL. So it's whatever the base URL was. And then it's sorting the output and displaying it as a table. That's what LS does. Uh, make dir is gonna be very much the same. It's gonna parse the URL, load the environment, create the access. Uh, create the, tar the, the target for that URL and then call make dir. So it's a thin wrapper around the components of that sync framework, which is again, a generalized way of accessing Xerox drive implementations and local file system stuff. So that being said, we can do things like Xerox, like I said, Xerox LS junk. We can do Xerox RM, Xerox junk license, right? We can go, I didn't rebuild it yet. Right, we'll delete it. Now we can do ls again. Oops, that's not gonna work. ls, right? Um, so we can also do things like Xerox copy and we can say, take the entire docs folder and uh, put it in junk. And it'll incrementally take that entire docs folder. So now if we do find temp junk, which is where that drive backend is actually stored. You can see all of the files are there. And then copy also supports something called, it supports a sync mode, which if we run it, it's gonna say copy complete because it's, we already copied everything that's in that folder, the source folder into the target, the drive. 
And what sync does is it actually inventories the destination and compares the sizes and modification times of the files in the source to the files in the destination. So if we go and we just delete, we do Xerox RM Xerox junk and we delete the attic folder, right? Now we do a Xerox copy sync, it's gonna copy just the attic folder because that's all that's missing. So that's kind of handy. Um, you can also do things like uh, Xerox copy license, oops, copy license to Xerox junk. And then we can do Xerox MV, uh, Xerox junk license to new license. And then we could do Xerox copy, Xerox junk license, oops, new license, right? And now we've got a new license file in here. So it's, make, it's the single file operations are probably where the ergonomics are not super slick yet. That'll come in time. So basically, by default, when you do a single uh, single parameter uh, copy, the source is the destination is implicitly dot. So it's the directory you're currently in. So I could say um, junk, and I think it'll make that folder for me. Yeah. Right. So we can delete junk, new license. So. And you can do things like this too. You can do Xerox uh, copy sync Xerox junk to HTTP junk dot Xerox .com, 8080. Should be no no changes because it's the same exact source and target. One's just the private version, one's the public version. Um, so you can actually do copies from independent web dev servers for, to individual Xerox drives without it ever having to copy the files locally, which is kind of slick. Um, so these tools, like this is, we're going to go ahead and probably drop this release as it sits, but, uh, this is the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of the CLI. I would also expect that in, we're, we're heading towards a, a 0 0.5 version. So all of this series is a 0 0.4 series. 0 0.5 is going to have some pretty significant changes with how a bunch of the capabilities and also probably a big refactoring of the CLI. So these commands might move around a little bit in the CLI. Um, and we might provide additional, you know, smoother ergonomics and uh, simpler ways of doing some of these things as we continue to, to develop it. But this should be enough to kind of get, uh, provide the next layer of functionality on top of this stuff. So, so yeah, that's basically some of the stuff that's coming out probably in 0.4.23, I would imagine. Uh, maybe next week, I'm recording this on Friday, the 12th of January. So it'll probably come out sometime next week, I would imagine. Um, and you know, if you're inclined, you can always go to the Git repo and build this branch and, and start messing with it. It's it, this this build, this branch will interoperate with what's in Xerox IO today. Like there's nothing, this is just CLI uh, conveniences. None of it's changes the way any of the, the backend works in any way. So, so yeah, that's uh, the most recent round of stuff coming in Xerox drives. Uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff coming with daemon modes and simpler sharing modes and simpler ways of uh, hosting multiple shares for things like Xerox front door and for desktop environments. There's a bunch of new UI coming for some of those things, uh, probably some desktop UI, uh, sort of a UI branding refresh. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the works. So it's a lot. We're a small team. We're trying to crank stuff out as quickly as possible. We're also debugging, you know, the production environment as it continues to scale up. So there's a bunch of work around that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the state of the world. I figured it was Friday. Always a good day to sort of do a quick office hours video. So there you go. Happy, happy Z rocking. Always feel free to reach out to us on Discord. Not Discord, Discourse. I always get those mixed up. Our Discourse, our, our forum. Reach out there. Uh, if you run into a bug or anything, feel free to, to file an issue. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.